My lips were moving, but you didn't hear anything. Hello, everybody. Father Stephen Imperato of ProtestChildKilling.com. ProtestChildKilling.com coming to you from Florida. It's good to be with all of you today. So I'm going to talk about me today at the request of one of my followers. And I think it was, a, she said it was a sincere question, and I think it is a sincere question. And I think it's an important question. I think it's important that you good folks know a little bit about me. Now, my website, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com, has an awful lot about me. All my ministries, my campaign, a picture of me as the patriarch of my my large family, right? Because I am a, a, a grandfather, a great-grandfather. I have three brothers, they, lots of nieces and nephews. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. I'm going to talk about my education. I'm going to talk about my background. We'll talk about that. And then also we're going to talk about the empire striking back. Now, what do I mean by that? The empire strikes back. And I thought this was really, really interesting that if you mention someone who's popular on social media, somehow their followers, and I don't know whether it's keywords or how that all works, but their followers, uh, find their way to your channel and they watch you and then they comment. And this doesn't happen often, but it surely happened uh, with yesterday's video. So the empire is striking back. And I wanna talk a little bit about that today. I wanna to talk about some comments made point out some things about the comments, but I really do want to honor um, a question that somebody had uh, in regards to me and uh, answer uh, their question. So that's what we're going to talk about. So the topic for today is the Empire Strikes Back and who is this great-grandfather priest? Who is he? Who am I? All right, so let's pray first, like we do each and every single day, and then we'll get to today's topic. And of course, we always start off by invoking St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Every day we consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping as valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired with this confidence. We fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother, to you we come before you we stand. Simple and sorrowful, O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency. Hear and answer us. Amen. My patron saint, St. Joseph, intercede for us. I was born on the Feast of St. Joseph, March 19th. I am 72 years old. I'm in my 73rd year. I've been retired now for several years. I'll talk about that too if you want. Uh, I, I, I'll do my, my life is an open book, all right? So um, you can find out everything about me. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that quite a bit. 
All right. Uh, yeah, so let, let's let's talk about that first. So I'm in my 73rd year, and uh, I could have retired at the age of 70, but the age of 67, after I resigned under very difficult circumstances from Priest for Life because of the shenanigans of Frank Pavone, he was Father Frank Pavone then, he is now Frank Pavone, the pro-life leader, formerly known as Father Frank Pavone. And uh, because of his shenanigans, because of his lies, because of his inappropriate behavior towards his employees, because of uh, uh, different, well, I mean, duplicity. I mean, you know, seemingly to be one way, but it's completely a different um, his narcissism, his micromanagement, I finally said, uh, I'm done, I'm done. And so that was January of 2019. So we're talking about uh, uh, five years ago. And I had three years to retirement and went back to my diocese and told my archbishop that I'm back. I'm at your disposal. I'll do whatever you want. I'll take a country parish. I'll go anywhere, do anything for three years uh, 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 until I retire at the age of 70. And he said, well, I don't think I have anything for you. And of course, he didn't like my pro-life activism. He made that very clear. He told me he didn't like my pro-life activism. Um, and so he didn't want me in his diocese, which was foolish because I would have went to a country parish and kept my mouth shut and done my job and uh, helped them out for three years, maybe longer if I liked the parish. Who knows? I might have stayed on. I missed COVID. I missed bankruptcy by him allowing me to retire three years early because after he said, I have no place for you, I could have said, well, canonically, you got to find me a job. But I said, well, I have enough time in for early retirement. He let me retire three years early. And then I started my own pro-life ministry on the road for life. And uh, then uh, three years ago, I uh, moved here to Florida. I owned a house in Albuquerque. I moved here to Florida. So I've been retired, yeah, almost six years. And uh, it's been great. And of course, I said, you can retire anytime you want as long as you keep working, right? So I still do pro-life work. I still do priestly ministry. I don't, uh, I have faculties with the Archdiocese of Santa Fe. I'm a priest in good standing. I'm going to be doing uh, uh, funerals. I, I do anointings. I, I do, I don't help out in any local parishes, which is okay. I considered doing that. Our Lord told me, no, hold off on it. The time is not right. So I'm not doing any regular masses and confessions in any local parishes, but I still go around the country. And when I'm asked, I get letters of good standing and I do what I'm asked to do, and um, it, it keeps me somewhat busy, but I, I decided this year I'm going to stay home, all right, and uh, that's uh, what I've been primarily doing. I've made some trips. Next next week, I'm going to Phoenix to visit uh, a dear friend of mine whose birthday it is, who's struggling with cancer. Uh, actually, a priest friend of mine and then another dear friend of mine who's struggling with cancer. I'm going to visit my friends out in Phoenix. And then I have friends coming here for a week. And so I, I keep busy. I keep busy. All right. So I'm a late life vocation. I was ordained at the age of 53, entered the seminary at the age of 48. I was a grandpa once when I entered the seminary at the age of 48. I was a grandpa four times by the time I got ordained to the priesthood at the age of 53 with the Archdiocese of Santa Fe. My adopted son, I adopted him as a single parent in 1987. John took his own life in 2014. God rest his soul and thank you for prayers for John. That is my always my primary my primary prayer intention is prayers for the repose of the soul of my son John. And so he took his own life in 2014, blessed me with four grandchildren, my oldest granddaughter, Arianne. 
a wonderful young lady, married. She has three children of her own, so I'm a great-grandpa priest. Very possible the only great-grandpa priest in the entire church. I have not heard of any other great-grandpa priest. Grandfathers, yes. I knew grandfather priests in the seminary. I've come across grandfather, grandfather priests, but not any great-grandpa priest. So that might be unique. I've talked about my five aspects of fatherhood. The fact that I'm a post-abortive father with two babies, hopefully, well, I know the two babies are in the hands of Jesus uh, and that they'll spend eternity in Jesus. Uh, they'll spend eternity in heaven, whether they're in heaven right this moment, I do not know. Um, adoptive father, again, I adopted my son, John. A spiritual father, I'm a Catholic priest. I'll celebrate uh, next year, this coming year, uh, May 14th, 20 years as a priest, 20 wonderful years as a priest. And then, of course, I'm a grandfather and great-grandfather. My educational background, that was the specific question that was asked of me. All right, the specific question that was asked of me is, um, Father, what about your education? You know, what about your, your educational background? I went to Manhattan College. First of all, I went to Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school, Catholic college. All right? Now, my Catholic high school wasn't very Catholic. Matter of fact, I walked away from the faith and the sacraments in Catholic high school post-Vatican II. Not because of Vatican II, but because of all the craziness, the sexual upheaval, the drug upheaval, the cultural upheaval. Then, of course, the craziness after Vatican II. I walked away from the sacraments for 15 years. I had an adult reversion in and around the age of 30. So from the time I was 15 to the time I was 30, I was away from the sacraments. During that period of time, I was complicit in the abortion uh, leading my Eve astray, not forcing her to have the abortion, but not standing up for her. And what I found out decades later was twins. Um, and of course, I did get a dispensation to become a priest because being party to an abortion is an impediment. So yes, Rome did release me. Rome was merciful. So I went to Catholic high school. It wasn't really a Catholic high school. I went to Catholic college. It really wasn't a Catholic college, Manhattan College. Then I went to Fairleigh Dickinson and got my master's of business administration. Yes, I have an MBA. I've worked in large retail operations for years and years and years. And then I started an educational consulting business, peer counseling. I owned a restaurant. I actually ran that restaurant for years doing pro-life. Uh, meanwhile, doing full-time pro-life activism. It was my pro-life activism and my adopting of John that led me to uh, finally uh, entered the seminary. John got married, started having children. That freed me up to enter the seminary. I'm not going to get into my total vocation story, but that's an interesting story in and of itself. So when I entered the seminary, I had a, an undergraduate degree and a master's of business administration, marketing management. Okay. I had taught college for years, right? I was an adjunct professor at numerous community colleges teaching small business management, management, uh, business 101, management 101, right? Uh, economics. I mean, a lot of college teaching experience. So I have an MBA, an undergraduate degree in marketing and management, and uh, then I entered the seminary. No philosophy degree, though. You need a philosophy degree, so I took a year of philosophy. So, yes, I have a, a bachelor's degree in philosophy. And then uh, I went for my master's degree. A master's of divinity is what you get if you complete the requirements of ordination. I got a master's of divinity. Not everyone, late life vocation, they can get certificates of divinity. I got a master's of divinity. And then I took extra credits and did comprehensive, not a dissertation, and got a master's of theology. So I have a master's of business administration, a master's of divinity, and a master's of moral theology with the focus on bioethics because 
uh, pro-life work, of course, was always, um, I've been an activist for 30 years, a pro-life activist for 30 years. So I'm a great-grandpa priest. I have started pregnancy resource centers. I have started numerous 501c3 ministries. Um, I'm a post-abortive Project Rachel, Rachel Vineyard certified priest. Uh, uh, done tons of spiritual direction, 20 years of spiritual direction, pastoral counseling. Uh, masters in moral theology, and so I've been around the block a few times, and I'm a grandpa, a great grandpa, right? An adoptive father. I mean, there are very few priests that have the practical education and the formal education that I have, right? There are many, many priests who are far more educated than me, of STLs, STDs, no, multiple. All uh, right, multiple uh, licentias, uh, multiple uh, doctorates, right? But do any of them have the practical background that I've had in my life, starting businesses, raising families, adopting children, uh, you know, starting businesses, uh, 501c3s, right? Pregnancy resource centers, uh, a restaurant. I mean, you know, I, I've... I have quite the curriculum vitae. And spiritual direction for 20 years, I've incorporated a lot that I taught and learned and lived in the business world to spiritual direction, which means that in my spiritual direction, I'm decisive, but also meditative, contemplative. I ponder all things in my heart, and I encourage people to ponder all things in their heart. But I also tell them, at some point in time, you have to be decisive. You have to choose between those two roads, those two paths or three paths that Jesus may have led out, uh, laid out for you, right? Um, and you need to be flexible, right? Um, um, you need to treat your spiritual life in such a way that you would treat any other aspect of your life. Schedule your, your spiritual exercises, right? Be orderly in your spiritual exercises. So I've taken a lot of business principles and applied them to the spiritual life. People like that. Tons of people come to me for spiritual advice, spiritual guidance, spiritual direction, whatever you want to call it, right? So I hope that answers um, your questions about uh, who this great grandpa priest is, how I became a great grandpa, the five aspects of fatherhood that I've experienced, the breadth and depth of my curriculum vitae. Uh, again, just in my pro-life work, all right, uh, being post-abortive myself, being a Rachel certified priest, uh, starting pregnancy resource centers, being the protest priest, uh, being a, a sidewalk. I've been a sidewalk counselor in front of abortion mills going back to 1999, 25 years. I've been counseling women in front. I've, I've been arrested five times trying to save babies from abortions inside of abortion facilities. So uh, I've been a leader within the mainstream corporate pro-life movement. Now I have nothing to do with the mainstream corporate pro-life movement. I am critical of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, and I am a great, great advocate and endorser and supporter of pregnancy resource centers. I did an hour and a half interview last night. And I regret, I lament the fact that I didn't talk about pregnancy resource centers and how we should all be supporting them with our time, talent, and treasure. While we're trying to abolish abortion through constitutional personhood, we should be supporting our local pregnancy resource centers and our local activists on the ground in front of these modern day Calvaries, these gates of hell. So if you want to know where to direct your money, your resources, your pro-life resources, your time, talent, and treasure, uh, look at your local pregnancy resource centers. They could surely use your help. All right. So that's, all right, that's where I'm at. Okay. So yesterday, I talked about Taylor Marshall. And I pointed out some serious flaws in a video that he did. And also some other serious flaws in who he is 
and uh, how he go about his business. And I talked about how he's either obstinate or ignorant. Clearly, the video that he made, uh, either he was maliciously lying or he was totally clueless, right? And this was about Vigano being reconsecrated as a bishop, right? And to me, this is who I see Taylor Marshall as being. Now, I posted something on Facebook this morning that relates to this, and I want to go and read it for you, all right? Uh, because there was a comment about, you know, Cardinal Zen is criticizing Michael Loft, and I mentioned that yesterday, and I'm not going to get into that, that mess at all, all right? I have respect for Michael Lofton. I do think that he gets uh, over the top sometimes, but so do I, all right? So do I. So we get passionate, all right? We say things we regret, etc. The criticism of Card by Cardinal Zen of Michael Lofton I thought was odd. I'm not even sure he really wrote it. And if somebody's not kind of like stirring the pot. But somebody may mention that, right, that people like Taylor Marshall make their living off of criticizing the Pope. And Michael Lofton makes his living defending the Pope. To me, that is a key point. That is a key point. You're making a living over constantly criticizing the Pope. And then somebody who makes a living off of defending the Pope. To me, there's no decision there in terms of who I'm going to lean towards. However, how about this? And I just posted this. I make not one dime from social media. Not one dime. So what is my agenda for defending the church, the Pope, Catholic teaching, and the pre-born? And getting all the criticism, not love of criticism, negative attention. I surely get plenty of criticism and negative attention. I'm going to talk about that today. Surely not love of that, right? Because I'm not as thick-skinned as people think I am. As a matter of fact, I can be pretty thin-skinned at times. All right, but the fact is, and this is something else that those of you want to know more of me, all right? I generate virtually no income as a priest, as a priest, all right? I went and did the last sacraments of, of a husband and wife, the, the husband who died. I told you about him. God rest his soul, John. God rest his soul. As a matter of fact, I'll be traveling down four hours next week on the 13th to do uh, his funeral service, his interment, all right? And, 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 and they'll donate, they'll donate, they'll give me a donation for that. They gave me a donation for traveling two hours to give him the last sacraments. I don't refuse donations. It's uncharitable not to accept charity, all right? You get that? It's uncharitable not to accept charity, all right? You don't turn charity down. Now, what you turn around and do with it, right? They can be charitable. I might turn around and give it to the homeless, right? Put it towards my ministry or take care of my bare minimums. But it's uncharitable not to accept charity, okay? All right? So I accept charity and I get some charity. I never, ever charge for my ministry. So if I do a keynote speech at a banquet in September, I'm doing a keynote speech at a breakfast, all right? Free will offering out in New Mexico, all right? I did a, a pro-life event, free will offering. I never charge, never, ever charge. I expect my expenses to be covered. If people donate, if they give to me, fine, okay? Uh, in terms of my pro-life ministry, all right, uh, people donate to my pro-life ministry. Uh, I never take a salary. I never take compensation. I take some expenses, all right? Sometimes I'll, I'll have my internet paid for, my cell phone paid for, my gas, right? Some of my, my travel expenses, but uh, I don't take salary. I don't take direct compensation from my pro-life ministry. So I... I, I, I earn very little income as a priest 
from my priestly pro-life ministries. So, Father, how do you live? How do you live? Well, I live off of my Social Security. Thank God I had a prior life. I got ordained at the age of 53. I went to the seminary at the age of 48. So my Social Security that I put in for years is, is okay. It's okay. And thank God the Archdiocese of Santa Fe has a good priestly retirement program. So the two of them together, it's okay. Then I have a small corporate pension. All right? So I can live reasonably enough. This house, this house that I have, the house that I had in Albuquerque came purely and completely from retirement. I didn't have any money in the bank until I started collecting my Social Security. When I was an active priest collecting Social Security, I was able to save a fair amount of money. And that's how I was able to buy the house in Albuquerque. No, I do not take promises of poverty. I am a secular priest, a diocesan priest, not a religious priest, okay? So somebody talked about all my sacred art as if I was attached to it. Yeah, I'm attached to the crucifix of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I bought very little in this church, in this church, this ecclesiastical museum, right? Church. It's a domestic ecclesia. It's a domestic church, right? Very little. The, I've been gifted. And my, if, if I, the, my oldest possession is my regulator clock, all right, that I've had now since what, 77 maybe, 1977, 78 maybe, so 88, 98, 2008, 2018, almost 50 years. If somebody came in and said, Father, I love your regulator clock, can, you, can I have it? I'd give it to him in a second. There's, there's virtually nothing in this house that if somebody asked me for it, I wouldn't give it to him in a second. I wouldn't hold, maybe my dogs. I don't think I'm going to give away my dogs, all right? They're close. They're, they only have a few years left. I'm not going to give away my dogs, all right? But in terms of everything else in my house, all my sacred art, if somebody wants it, I'll give it to them. I am not attached to any of it. My forerunner truck that actually my ministry owns, is 12 years old. It's got 270,000 miles on it. It's my only vehicle. So I am not living this high and mighty life. I am not living this grandiose life. I am not attached to earthly things. So somebody brought that up. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. She said that she has problems uh, certain problems with priests. Um, and I told her, I get it. I said, I have a lot of problems with a lot of my fellow priests. All right. Okay. But all right. Okay. So let's talk about the Empire Strikes Back, the Taylor Marshall Empire. Does he have a million followers? I don't know how many followers he has. 300, 400,000, 500, maybe a million. I don't know. Okay. All right, so I got a thousand views of yesterday's video. So the video is only 14 hours old, the thousand videos. That's one benefit of uh, talking about Taylor Marshall, I guess, uh, that your videos get a lot of circulation. All right, uh, so uh, I posted uh, all of you Taylor Marshall fans here, not one word about Vigano and Taylor Marshall's love of Vigano. Not one word about what I point out about Taylor Marshall's obviously cluelessness about the reconsecration. You all can't be serious, can you? Then again, you all follow Taylor Marshall. So I'm being critical of Taylor Marshall's followers because Taylor Marshall's followers are ridiculing me, criticizing me. Yet, some of the things that they say have not, well, actually, everything they say has nothing to do with Vigano. Has nothing to do with me calling Taylor Marshall either ignorant or arrogant or malicious. All right, so I'm going to go through all of these. 
It's encouraging to see a priest without an agenda other than reality and the correct understanding of the church in Jesus. Thank you, Val. Beware of people bashing the Pope. We need to love Mama Mary. We need to believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Amen. Amen. It's all about the Eucharist and the Blessed Mother. God bless you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your insights and prayers. Thank you, Father, for your point of view. Thank you, Father, for being a voice of reason in these crazy times we're living in. I thank you, Father, from Ireland. Unfortunately, the same Bishop Williamson set up here in recent years. God protect us from these wolves. Uh, Father, I have to agree with you. The supposed communication from Cardinal Zen does not in any way sound like a prince of the church. The manner of speaking is beneath Cardinal Zen to the degree that it makes me suspect the deception to pit two brothers against each other. That could be true. I mean, I, I thought it was odd, but I'm not I'm not getting involved in that, okay? Hey, Father, I can't get your talk. Got to check what you said. Hope health is good. God bless. Thank you, David. I don't know really what you mean. All right, uh, my dear friend Marissa, I'm not going to read her comment, uh, but she says, John, may he rest in peace and great talk. It's always wonderful to join you here. God bless you, Father, for your video. It makes people aware. Uh, here, here, Father, you're spot on. Senior is an, is, is an honorific of bishops, all right? Yeah, 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 I can get that, but, but, but most people connotate Monsignor as something less than bishop. Why wouldn't Taylor Marshall make that clarification, right? In other words, why wouldn't he point out that it was Bishop Williamson? I think it was Monsignor Williamson uh, hiding the fact that it was Bishop Williamson because people would recognize Bishop Williamson as being a schismatic. I have two pictures of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross on my walls, plus a picture of Jesus and Mary. I love St. Teresa Benedicta, Benedicta of the Cross, right? That is uh, Edith Stein, right? Uh, about Zen, Zen is 92 years old. Yeah, I think it's a misunderstanding. Totally with you, Father. I don't trust these converts. Well, I mean, I know a lot of overly zealous converts, right? But some of them, I mean, are just... All right, so here we go. Here we go, all right? So surely those naked Pachamama statues were not depictions of Our Lady. Yes, they were. It would be very disrespectful if they were. Well, you don't understand different cultures. You travel around the world, and their views, I mean, the Amazon, they all run around naked. Everyone's naked. So if they're going to create a sculpture, a sculpture, a, 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 a stat, you think they'd be naked? Of course. You know, people need to get out more. They need to get out of the U.S. more. They need to travel to Africa. They need to go. I've never been to South America. All right. But I've been around. I've been around. All right. And these depictions, the enculturation within the Catholic Church is real. Is real. It's not us acquiesce into paganism. It is us sanctifying that which was pagan and bringing it into the church and culturation. That's why as you travel around the world, you'll see masses that here in the United States would appall us. But these people love the mass. I've experienced this. All right, so somebody says, actually, there's centuries of old history of naked Mary art and Catholicism. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. The Sistine Chapel itself has nudity painted by Michelangelo on its ceiling and mass was held under that nudity. <clears throat> I understand what you're saying, but there's a difference between art and vulgarity. The other issue here is the statues are not Pachamama. Thank you. The people in that ceremony have never called it Pachamama. They called it Our Lady of the Amazon. A new secular news source called it. So he's explaining exactly how that came down. But Taylor Marshall has been perpetrating this lie now for years and years and years. The lie has been exposed. And this is the insidiousness of Taylor Marshall. This is the dangers of Taylor Marshall. That these lies have been exposed. The truth has been told. And yet these lies are still being carried forward by followers of Taylor Marshall. This is dangerous. It's dangerous. 
I don't get it. We're not supposed to believe others who bring detailed points of historical evidence and everything to the table as you condemn them, but just give us generalities and we're supposed to believe you over them. I'm at lost here. Well, Bruce, you just gave me a bunch of generalities. You haven't given me any specifics, detailed points of historical evidence. What? What are you talking about? You're talking about the Second Vatican Council. You're talking about the ordinary form of the Mass. You're talking about Nuestra Senora de Amazon. You're talking about Vigano. I haven't talked about specifics. I'm at a loss here. Well, pay attention, Bruce. Pay attention. I know that you're not used to paying attention or you wouldn't be buying into the nonsense that Taylor Marshall feeds you day in and day out. But pay attention here. If you pay attention here, you're going to learn. And you're going to be, your eyes are going to be open. Those who have eyes ought to see. Those who have ears ought to hear. Now, here's this, 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 this lady, Bernadette Carolyn. Glad to hear you talk about Biden, the Bidens. It's not apostrophe S. Surprise, Father, you didn't know that they were on the wrong road. How do you make that assumption? Supporting gay marriage, etc. I think I made it very clear that they defy the church in numerous ways. I mean, this goes back to 2020. So I don't know what you're talking about, Bernadette. Father, you need to talk to Taylor Marshall and not about him. Taylor has a load of Catholic Catholics reciting the Holy Rosary. So do I. So do I. Right? The Catholics reciting the Holy Rosary, all right, daily, all right, is something that a lot of people have a lot of Catholics doing. That does not mean that he can't be misled. And in spite of the fact that he's got them praying the rosary, the evil ones got them believing a lot of nonsense, a lot of tripe, a lot of uh, uh, crap about the Pope, right? So I'm sorry, but you don't make a good case. Did no talk to Marshall? Do you do you do you live like this? Right? Uh Right. And then of course, I don't get it. What do you mean, Father Stephen? Do I live do I live like? Do I live like? Do you live like this? In other words, you know, do do you do you do you live cluelessly? Right? I mean, making assumptions. Wow, getting really snarky today. Not a cool position. Mercy, justice, prayer. So this is interesting, right? So this is interesting. Note, I, I pray before, during, and after my live broadcast, right? We're not done praying. We're going to pray some more. I put mass on every single day. Live stream mass. I preach. Eucharistic adoration. We pray at the beginning of this live stream, at the end of this live stream. I give a blessing. Nobody ever talks about that. So then what is this guy talking about, right? Uh, wow, getting really snarky today, not a cool position, mercy, justice, prayer. Well, look, at this is serious stuff. This is serious stuff, right? So I am being merciful and I am being just. And indeed, it's my job as a priest, as a matter of fact, I have a moral obligation to warn those when they're being deceived. And as far as prayer, all right, I pray, I've already done the entire liturgy, the hours for the day, all right, uh, 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 did the Angelus, all right, at 6 a.m. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just these, these people, again, they make assumptions, all right, they, they, they take snapshots and, and uh, that's it. I think Jill meant we as in the people, bit disingenuous to say she's in charge. Just wait till Trump gets in, then the chaos will ensue. Oh, we have a Biden fan, a Biden fan. How did you find your way here? Aaron. Aaron, I think Jill meant we as in the people. No, she meant we as in Joe and Hart and the crime family, the Biden crime family. Oh, God help us. 
Jesus, Lord, have mercy on us. Bit disingenuous to say she's in charge. Well, bit scary to say that Joe's in charge. Just wait until Trump gets in, then chaos will ensue. Yeah, because you liberals will go crazy, right? And I'm not a big Trumper by any means. I've talked about that at length. All right, so another thing about, boy, people, people are paying attention here, though. There are, there are a lot of people paying attention because I didn't mention about Zen and Lofton very much, right? And people picked up on that. Hail Vigano, I support him. All right. Then you're a schismatic. All right, you're a material schismatic. Father Stephen, just wondering if you ever read Pope Francis' Laudato Si. Yes, I have. Of course I have. It's an encyclical, of course, and I've commented on it at length, right? And if you have, do you have any thoughts you're willing to share? Yeah, the Pope should do a better job. There's eight Eight times in Laudato C that he's made it very clear that environmental policy, the environmental agenda, the population reduction cannot include population reduction. The population reduction cannot be part of the environmental agenda. There's eight times he references that in Laudato C. Now, all that being said, James, I would love to see the Holy Father reference that over and over and over again. Does he do it enough? No. No. Right? He doesn't. And this I want to point out, James. I am critical of the Pope. I am critical of the Pope. I don't agree with the Pope's position on the remedy to the worldwide pandemic. I will never take that remedy. I'll never be a part of it. It's immoral. It is not an act of charity to take the remedy. It is an act of prudence to avoid it. All right? I disagree with some of his appointments to the Pontifical Academy of Life and the Pontifical Academy of Science. All right? So I have problems with the Pope, but he's the Pope, and he's not a heretic. He's not malicious. He's not diabolical. He's not Satan. He's not the anti-Pope, right? Uh, uh, you know, he's not all of these things that he's being called. All right? So please, if you find the time, help with a little guidance to get me grounded on what he's trying to accomplish. Here's what I believe generally, real quickly, what the Pope is trying to accomplish. He's trying to be like Jesus and gather in sinners to himself, right? right? And I've talked about this at length, right? Jesus tried to gather sinners in. He ate with them. He drank with them. He, he fed them. He taught them. He had dinner with them, right? He dined with them. I mean, he spent most of his time with sinners. Now, people say, well, Father, they were repentant sinners. No, they were not repentant sinners. The overwhelming majority of people that Jesus hung out with all the time, he had some disciples, he had the apostles, he had the holy women of Jerusalem. There was only, what, 72 people? How many people were in the upper room? How many people were at Pentecost? Right? When you, when you think about the thousands and thousands that he fed and he cured and he cast out demons and he ate and he drank with and he taught, right? Nobody, none of those people were repentant. On Good Friday, they were yelling, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. But Jesus planted seeds for three years. And then when the Holy Spirit came down upon the church at Pentecost, they all came to conversion. They all became baptized. They all became Christian. They all became Catholic. So that's what the Holy Father's trying to do. Is it scary? Yes, it scares me. Is it confusing? Yeah, it's confusing. Was Jesus confused? Was Jesus confusing? Jesus wasn't confused. Was Jesus confusing? His apostles were completely confused. Everybody 
Mary was confused. I, I think the Blessed Virgin Mary every night had to calm down the apostles because I think that they were confused. I think they were scared all the time. Jesus even said he was purposely confusing in his parables. So let's, I, I'm willing to give the Pope the benefit of doubt that's what he's trying to do. And I'm trying to give the benefit of doubt to the people who are say, willing to say, he scares me, he confuses me, fine. But he's not the anti-Pope, he's not the anti-Christ, he's not diabolical, he's not demonic, he's not satanic, he's not the devil himself, he's not a heretic. Right? He's trying to be Christ-like and gather people in. It's scary. I get it. Dear Father, I wonder if you're attached to the beautiful artwork or if you can sell it. I, I, don't, I wouldn't sell it. I'm not going to sell any of my artwork. If I give artwork to somebody and they, they donate, give me a donation, that's fine. And give it to the poor. Well, I do have outreach to the poor. I take a percentage of everything that comes in and I give it to the poor. I keep a stash of $10 bills in my truck. And when I see it, I just saw a homeless guy yesterday, I was coming back and gave him a $10 bill. So I don't talk too much about that, not too often about that, but I do have outreach to the poor, the homeless. All right, I keep, like I said, a stash of $10 bills in my truck. All right. Um, all right. All right, so, so Taylor Marshall's truth-telling, this shows clearly who you are. And then somebody just tells them, to just stop. How credibly disrespectful to dress a priest like this. I'm not a huge Taylor Marshall fan. He talks too much, but I get a sense his heart is sincere. I lost why anyone would defend Pachamama. I just explained that to you. Thrown in the Tiber wasn't enough. It seemed a campfire would have been better. A campfire would have been better because when you dispose of sacred art, you're supposed to burn it or bury it, okay? Not throw it in a polluted river. God bless Taylor Marshall. Grifter. So I don't know whether he's calling Taylor Marshall a grifter or if I'm a grifter. I don't know. I can't be a grifter because I'm not making a dime off of social media. All right. And then I respond to all you Taylor Marshall fans who have showed up here. The woman who presented the statue to the Pope clearly said in the West of Senora de Amazonia, the statue was blessed. Keep believing the propaganda you're being fed and try to travel to different parts of the world. Uh, you do know Catholicism is universal. Yes. All right, so that's it. That's it. So notice that nobody talks about the whole idea of Vigano. It, Taylor Marshall tries to explain away the reconsecration of Vigano, denying his priestly, I mean his 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 Episcopal ordination. Let's let's think about what Vigano did. He denied his Episcopal ordination. He didn't have any doubts as to whether it was legitimate or not. He's denying the Catholic Church and their ability to consecrate him as a bishop. So he denies his Episcopal consecration and gets reconsecrated in a schismatic sect. Starts his own seminary and wants to ordain his own priest. These are schismatic acts. Calls for the arrest of the Pope and calls for people to take sides. These are schismatic acts. Does Taylor Marshall address all of that? Do any of you address all of that? You criticize me. You make just glib comments, right? make declarations. Let's deal with the facts here. There's a whole litany of schismatic acts that I've been laying out about Vigano for years. Taylor Marshall does not address them or he dismisses them and he still props up and supports Vigano. He's a material schismatic as Vigano is a formal schismatic. Address that. Address that, folks. Pachamama is not addressing Vigano as a schismatic, all right? It's not, all right? 
All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Look, you guys want... Here, do I have a devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary? All my four prayer cards that I wrote have the Blessed Virgin Mary on the cover. Mary, undoer of knots. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Our Lady of America, Our Lady of Guadalupe. All right, you want these prayer cards? Send me a self-addressed stamp envelope. Go to protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. And again, uh, I will send you a packet of these prayers. Uh, prayer cards for every envelope you send me. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops, all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church. Remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Stephen. Intercede for the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, especially in our hour of need, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Intercede for the conversion of the world and the end to abortion. Amen. Let's pray for Taylor Marshall, John Henry Weston, Anthony Stein, and Michael Matt, and all of those who materially support the formal schismatic Archbishop Carlos Maria Bigano. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed Mother, intercede uh, for them. Put your intercessory graces to work in their lives and bring them home to Mother Church. Let's pray a Hail Mary for Abby Johnson, for Kristen Hawkins, Margie Danifel, Sir Frank Pavone. Lila Rose, all the mainstream corporate pro-life leaders that indeed they get out of their knots. Mary, undo her knots, undo their knots and uh, and get them to detach from mammon and stand on constitutional person from the moment of conception so we can abolish abortion. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, holy Mary, mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Let's pray for all those who suffer from physical or spiritual trials and tribulations, whether it be cancer, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, clinical depression, suicidal ideation, any, any physical or spiritual trial and tribulation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, holy Mary. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of America dot com, Our Lady of America dot com. Please pray for one of the board members on Our Lady of America dot com is going through some physical trials and tribulations. You have the statue of Our Lady of America there, the image, the diary, large image in my chapel, Our Lady of America dot com, the original website of Sister Mildred of this approved USCCB private devotion. They've approved it as a private devotion. All right, realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org. You're buying a home, selling a home. You're moving from a blue state to a red state, from a red state to a red state, within a red state. And you need a realtor, realestateforlife.org, to donate a portion of their commission to a pro-life activist of your choice pregnancy resource center, whatever you like. Again, tell them I sent you. I don't need to be the pro-life activist who you support. All right. The mensmarch.com, rallyforpersonhood.com can all be found. All these URLs, all these websites, my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel. They can all be found at protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Please subscribe to YouTube. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, the daily offering. Make sure you offer up your work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time, your rosary, all your prayers, everything, right? To Jesus, united to Jesus on the cross and ask him to shed his mercy down upon your personal intentions, uh, ministerial intentions, prayer, and uh, all, all your health intentions, family intentions, all your intentions, right? And the intentions of all those who we said we were praying for, including those who may forget to pray for. Mass is still coming up. I haven't done Mass yet, so we'll do Mass in the Padre Pio Chapel, right on the other side of the wall here. I'm Father Stephen Abrado again. 
I love you. Just pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go out to the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.